anointing to you, encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. So never be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor be embarrassed over my imprisonment, but overcome every evil by the revelation of the power of God. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. That is the verse. And ladies and gentlemen, members of the congregation, this is April, our youth month. And you are most welcome. This is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Ashley Kendi Marcelina and I have my co-moderator. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mark Musioka. Yes, and we are excited because this is the year 2024, April, the Youth Month, and our theme is Sparked for Power. And I hope you are excited, and we also welcome the online audience. Please, you're most welcome, and join us. And even as we continue with the service, please, let's just reflect and just think about what is this whole concept of being sparked for power as children of God. And we'll also want you to engage with us even in the comment section as we continue with the service. And now, Psalm 147, verse 1, it says, Praise God, how good is it to sing to our God? How pleasant and fitting is it to praise Him? With that in mind, I would like to welcome the one, the only, Youth Ministry Worship Team. Come on, let's give a round of applause. Hallelujah! Celebrate Jesus in this place. Give a shout of praise to Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Turn it. Shut the ticket up.
Kelele, 
seven times, right? And they were giving the shout of praise. And on the last day, what happened? The walls. Can you do that? For our King of Kings, can you do that? On the count of three, we give God a mighty shout of praise because only He is worthy. And we lift His name high above every other name. Can you do that? Sita Buru Buru. All right, so one, two, three, give a shout of praise to Elohim. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy to receive every single praise, every single worship. And we lay down our crowns and we worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
you are the redeemed of the Lord, give the Lord a shout of praise, a shout, a shout of celebration all over this place in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, our sovereign Lord, that indeed we stand here redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And this morning as we gather around this table, we pray that your presence will dwell with us and continually take over this service in the name of the Lord. We thank you for the blood of Jesus on the cross. We thank you for the conquest and we thank you for the victory. And therefore we give you a shout of praise, a shout, a shout of praise. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. What a joy to gather together to celebrate the table of the Lord this first Sunday of the month of April. Would you want to turn to somebody and welcome them to our communion service as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen and amen. Welcome every last one of us, including the, the online audience. We are grateful to God that we are here like we always do it, that every first Sunday of the month across Sitam, our Sunday of the month across Sitam, we gather together to celebrate the victory of the cross. And today the Lord is amongst us doing amazing things amongst us because it is his good pleasure to be with us and to be amongst us and to do amazing things in our lives. And therefore this morning as we gather to celebrate the communion, it's not just another Sunday, just another first Sunday of the month. But today, God is doing a new thing in our lives. And if you believe it, give him a shout of praise and celebration. Our pastor Jigerson will be reading for us the words of restitution in a very short while. But as we gather today, this is the youth month. And we thank God for our young people as we kick off the month. And today we have our young people in the service. It's a family service and we rejoice with every last one of us. Our children are also here. And uh, even as our pastor reads the words of restitution, after that we'll be doing the serving and I'll be giving us the instruction even after that. Pastor Jigerson. I'm going to read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 23, going onwards. The Bible says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was to be betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more designing with thee, with the regard to ourselves, we will not come to such under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry, should eat something at home so that when you meet together it may not result in judgment and when I come I will give further directions 
Thank you so much, Pastor Jigerson. Our servers will be coming to us shortly with the emblems. Kindly, when you receive the emblems, hold on to it until we'll be able to eat together. This also being a family service, I would request that our parents can guide our children. But if your child is born again, they can be able to partake of this communion table. The other thing is, this is not the table of Sitam, but the table of those that have been redeemed and washed by the blood of Jesus. So if you're visiting with us from any other church and you know the Lord Jesus as your savior, you are welcome to be part of this communion table. The Lord bless you even as you enjoy the power of the resurrected savior. Amen.
given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat of the bread together. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, This cup is my new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup together. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We thank you. For the shed blood, we thank you by the stripes of Jesus, we receive our healing. And this morning as we gather together as a community to celebrate the victory of the cross, we are grateful that at that cross our sins were forgiven. We are so grateful that at that cross our bodies receive our healing in advance because you are God and there is no other God like you, our Father. And this morning, Sovereign Lord, even as we gather together to worship you, we remember winning Yena of a Hardy WM group whose father is unwell and admitted in Kenyatta Hospital. Dokas Njeri of a Hardy WM group whose mother is unwell and admitted in Coptic Hospital. Father, we pray even for Elizabeth Keter of Jerusalem SG who has lost the mother. This morning, you are not a father who is far removed from our sorrows and our pain and our suffering and because you love us we declare this morning these dear ones oh father they receive their healing in the mighty name of Jesus and father even as we gather there could be others this morning that could be carrying various burdens in your house oh God and at this point congregation if you have a need that you brought in the house of the Lord there is victory, there is healing, there is deliverance. Just lift up your right hand before the Father. Because He knows you by your name, by your location, and by your need. And Father, those that have lifted their hands to you, may you remember them as you heal this dear one so God, as you comfort with the bereaved, Father. May you remember even those that are lifting their hands before your presence this morning. We declare that you reign and you rule. We praise you for the miracles. We thank you for the victories that we appropriate this morning because it is not just another Sunday morning but it is the day of deliverance it is the day of victory it is the day of lifting and sit and buru buru we give the Lord a shout of praise because he is doing it for us celebrate the Lord this morning because he is a faithful father and Lord we thank you because you have done it for us we commend the rest of this service to you because you're good. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, you can celebrate the Lord even as the Sabbath come by. You can kindly push your cups to the aisle and the, ash, uh, the, the Sabbath will come and pick them. The Lord bless you.
come to April, the youth month, and we are super, super excited. Like we said before, my name is Ashley Kelly Marcelina, and my co-moderator is... Mark Musioka. Mark Musioka, and we are really excited because it is youth month, and it's going to be different, guys, and you are most welcome. So as we begin, we just want to know, who are our first-time visitors? We love visitors. We are excited to have them. So any first-time visitor in the congregation, any... Please raise your hand. I'm not sure whether it's the light that I can't see, but any first time visitor? There is one. Please stand up. Please stand up so that we can welcome you. Pro I can see you. Please stand up. You, please. I can see you in a blue shirt. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Please appreciate our visitor. Thank you so much for coming today. Anyone else? Any other first time visitor? Okay, I hope I've not missed anyone. So, church, what do we tell our first-time visitors? Our church has come to an end. Yes, your search for a church has come to an end, and you are most welcome. Please make sure uh, you just, uh, I believe you've seen our welcome team, and also after the service, our pastor will be inviting you at the front just to have a time of engagement. So feel most welcome here at Sitamburubur. And if you're going back to your church, say hi. But please feel most welcome just to join us even in our services every Sunday. So, uh, Mark, it is, the youth sun it is the youth month, not youth Sunday because it's a whole month. Uh, first of all, I know it's April. So there are April babies and then we also have those having anniversaries. Anniversary. Youth sick or sure, you have an anniversary, but... So, first of all, uh, who, who, who are the people born in April? April babies? April babies? You can stand up. Please stand up so that we can sing for you. Thank you. Hey, Pastor Carol, our own new pastor. Okay. Anniversaries in the month of April. To see mommy, to see what to school. Wow, yes, you can see. Uh, what's your team? This month is sparked for power. So, Mark, please tell me when you hear the word sparked for power, what comes to mind as a young person? Uh, sparked for power, I think it means for me, it's when someone is, let's say, empowered mm. by the Holy Spirit and let's say he finds his calling or finds his gift that is given by God and spreads the gospel. And you can leave. Well, the moment I had sparked for power, the first time was like, hey, charged up that's the first thing that came to mind uh, but then I think even after pondering on first Timothy 6 8 it's basically living in that power that God has given us not living in a spirit of peer fear well, not peer guys it's fear <laughs> yes uh, pardon my French um, but not living in a spirit of fear but power and sometimes we really hide ourselves. You know, sometimes we have the giftings and everything, but we are so scared 
uh, of what we actually can do and we really don't live in that power. And I think we are called to live in it. But let me hear, because I told us to point on it, I, just one member, one gentleman from the congregation and also one lady from the congregation, what is your understanding when you hear sparked for power? Just one person. One gentleman, one lady. Anyone. Uh -huh. I see people are really thinking right now. Or, yeah, go if, if you're smiling at me, but I'll come to you because you're really welcoming me. Watch out to what a foot a kidogo. Kidogo to Usio go up and Niki Kufiki at Tuku Bali Wito. Ay, 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 ay. Gentlemen, you you really smiled at me. I was I was really encouraged to come here. So please tell us, what do you understand when you hear that the theme sparked for power? Thank you. What I think is we, it is uh, being energized, rejuvenated in the spirit. Wow, being energized, rejuvenated in the spirit. Hey, sons and daughters of the whole the whole the can God. He, can you say the God and smiley? Hey, it was smiley a lafu utawanini. Ama kimpatia mic at a smile. Patia tu moja. Ah, kwanza unaona wengi wana wana blush tu wana jificha. A lady. Ah, thank you, thank you. Um thinking of being refreshed. Refreshed. Thank you, thank you. Nice one, nice yes. one. And we also have our children in the congregation, our young people as well, so they can also tell us something. Yes, just tell us what you think. Our anything, children. Anything. I want to scare shy kidogo, but I have some beautiful girls, Pia Uku. Just tell me. What do, you, what do you think when you are sparked for power? Going out for worshipping. She says going out. So let's just keep on pondering because as the children of God, we are called to live in that same, same power. And I hope that we'll be empowered even as we continue in this month of April. But like we said, Youth Month, things are going to be a bit different. What is going to be happening next Sunday? For next Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, we have men of Adulam. So Adulam is like a youth version of men of action. So it will be Adulam leading the service. So there will be a dress code. The dress code is all black, sneakers, and a bandana. Today it was supposed to be black and white, but to me, Urumia. Kidogo, to eat, to me, watch here, to Leo. Next Sunday. Next Sunday, all black, sneakers, and a bandana. Ashering, ashering, meski apo, kuingia. Walafako me vaivo, you only need entrance. Yes, such. Eh, kamu nataka mastingo za bandana, to neza wapatia Pinterest inspirations. Neza va uku, kwa waste. Kwa mkono. Kwa, kwa mkono, kwa, kwa forehead. Ama Tuneza inini. Shingo. Ama kwa shingo. Tukwa na styles. Tutawa saidia tu musijali. But yon yo dress code. Tume agree. We're in agreement. Asante, asante. Yes. So I'd like to welcome the media team for the announcements. Hello and welcome to Sitamburuburu, where we keep it Christ. It is Sunday, the 7th of April, which also happens to be the first day of Youth Month. My name is Owen Charles, and these are the announcements for today. The new discipleship class is ongoing at grade 6B after every first service. Please register at the Huduma desk. All non-registered members intending to become members of Sitam Buruburu are invited to register for the membership class today after second service in the main sanctuary. Have you given your life to Jesus and have not gone through the new believers class? You're kindly invited to join the new cohort that is ongoing at grade 6J from 8 a.m. Please sign up at the Huduma desk. 
We have embarked on a generosity initiative that we do believe over the next two years will help us to settle 23 of our SITAM assemblies in permanent residences. And we also do believe that over the last two weeks, you and your family have been praying together on what the Lord would lay in your heart so that you become part and parcel of this journey that together in SITAM we are walking. Now, each and every one of us can participate, and we do urge every member of SITAM to participate, whether adult or youth or child, that no one be left behind as we move together in generosity. Some of us uh, indeed can give uh, much more than the 50,000 that we used as an example last time. Some of us uh, might only be able to manage a little less than that. But whatever it is uh, that each of us would make a commitment uh, that we are going to move together, not just 25,000 people, but every member of SITAM engaged in this initiative. Therefore, as we look ahead, today we are giving you a chance to make a commitment. And this commitment will be led through an app that we do believe will help each and every one of us both to track our giving and also to know how we are giving as individuals so that we are not left behind. Thank you for being part of the Together in Generosity campaign. A special downloadable app has been created to facilitate the process of registering your pledge and tracking your giving entirely from your mobile device. The registration process is simple. Once you've downloaded the app, follow the screen prompts to enter your name, your phone number, and your email address. Press Next and find your CETAM assembly in the drop-down menu. Create and confirm password and register. Next, select a monetary or in-kind pledge. Enter an amount and choose the redemption details. Don't forget to choose reminder options by SMS or email. Confirm your pledge and reminder details. You'll receive a confirmation message by SMS on the phone number you provided. There are various ways to redeem your pledge in the app. Select an installment amount and a convenient date each month on which you wish to be reminded to redeem your pledge. When you're ready to redeem the pledge or part of it, press Redeem and select one of the payment options provided, M-Pesa, PayPal, bank transfer, etc. Type in the amount and press Redeem. Follow the prompts to finish the payment. You will receive notification that your payment has been received. Download the app today. It's available in the Apple Store for iOS users and in Google Play Store for Android users. Name of the app is Setam Church. Do join us together as we move in this initiative together in generosity. God bless you. The Children Ministry would like to invite the parents of the children who have received the gift of salvation recently and have not gone through the New Believers class to a short meeting today after the first service at the dining hall. The New Believers class will begin on 14th of April. The SITAM Southern Region presents the Youth Conference for all teens and youth. Mark your calendars for the 17th to the 19th of April 2024 at SITAM Karen with the hashtag Youth Takeover. Feel at home in God's presence with power-packed worship, anointed ministry and top-notch sessions. Koso Chekwe. We kindly appeal to the congregation to donate dry food stuff such as grain, cooking oil, rice, sugar, and salt to feed the needy among us. You can drop off your gifts at the office during the week or on Sundays at the Massey Basket drop-off point. Your kind contribution will go a long way to feeding a family. We are pleased to announce the first reading of the bands of marriage between Raphael Mwenda and Gloria Gerop to be held on the 26th of April, 2024 at Sitam Karen from 11 a.m. We are pleased to announce the second reading of the bands of marriage between Collins Muduya Vita and Zifros Minayo to be held on the 27th of April, 2024 at Sitam Karen from 11 a.m. We are pleased to announce the second reading of the bands of marriage between 
Dominic Dadacha Huka and Jilo Dida Karai to be held on 20th of April 2024 at Gororukesa Sitam Missions from 11.30 a.m. We are pleased to announce the third and final reading of the bands of marriage between Givan Eshula Anungo and Stephanie Nasenya Kwavi to be held on 13th of April 2024 at Sitam Buruburu from 11 a.m. Should there be anyone with a just cause why these couples should not be wedded in a holy matrimony, please present it to the senior pastor before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. So our Trade Fair 2024 is here with us. Uh, bigger and better. The date is 14th of April, the second Sunday of April. We are inviting the small enterprises. We are inviting the corporates to just come here and showcase uh, part of what you do because Sitam Buruburu is known for the big business. Our community, the business community is quite large here at Sitam Buruburu. The costs... Small enterprise, 5,000. You can book medium enterprise, 10,000. Large enterprise, 15,000. The corporates will be paying 20,000 to showcase what you have with us. Just sign up at the Huduma Desk with our CBF community team and we'll be able to enlist you even for the great day. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 14th of April. That has been the bulletin for today. I'd like to give a special thanks to our media team. I also want to leave you with a verse from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, which says, Do not let anyone look down upon you just because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. My name is Owen Charles, and have a great Sunday. Let's appreciate the media team for the good work. Thank you so much, media team. So, I have two more announcements. For men of Adulam, if you would like to volunteer for next Sunday, you can see Owen, Owen if you can wave, or Leon. Leon? Yeah, okay, you can see Owen. And uh, there's a new believer, new members class today, immediately after the first service. And I would like to welcome Pastor Purity for an important notice. Let's appreciate her. I want us to appreciate the youth, the young people. Re uh, Reverend Karo Kyogora is our youth pastor, and this month is the youth month, and uh, I hope you feel youthful. You will not just look at the young people, but also engage and connect. If you're next to a young person, just give them a high five. I can see people who are not young, but young at heart. You're giving yourselves high fives. It's okay. But let's give it up for the youth. This is the youth month. Thank you, Candy and Mark. And today marks the beginning of this month. Therefore, we are going to celebrate our young people led by our very own Reverend Carol Kyogora. We celebrate you. Let's celebrate our pastor. And by the way, it's her, it's her birthday month. We thank God for you and the great work that God has been helping you to do with the young people. Even you, Pastor Jaigason, where were you? Pastor Jaigason says it's also her birthday month. Let's celebrate our pastors. Um, we look forward to great things this month, and I'm excited about it. Amen? So, I'm here because of Together in Generosity campaign that has been just announced from the bishop's office, led by our very own presiding bishop, Reverend Kalisto Odede. And the intention is to ensure that as we, as Sitam Buruburu enjoys the rest of God, that the rest of the upcoming assemblies also are able to have some place to worship, a conducive environment to worship and call upon the name of the Lord. So at this point in time, I want to invite us um, to go to your phones, to just go to your phones at this point. If you have a smartphone, uh, the statistics show that Kenyans have at least three smartphones. So 
your neighbor there is heavy laden with three phones. So at least I know every last one of us must be. There is over 110% internet penetration in this nation, particularly in the capital city. So you go to your app store, your Google uh, Play store, and you search for Sitam Church. And you'll see there, there are quite a number. There is a Sitam Business Forum, but particularly you'll see together in generosity, you download the app and follow the prompts. The phone will give you the prompts. And as you do that, I also want to announce to us that if you might be struggling with using the app, we have hard copy envelopes and pledge forms at the Huduma desk already provided for there. And if you're stuck, you can still go to the ushers. Our ushers will be able to guide you further, but you can pass by the Huduma desk and pick the hard copy. Now we are, every assembly is putting together a task force to be able to run this campaign for the next two years. And our very own Elder Evans Gekonyo will be leading that initiative here in Sitam Buruburu. And we'll be having around seven of the members. Uh, the trainings have already gone forth. And therefore, we invite every last one of us to be part of what God is already doing in this ministry by the power of his Holy Spirit. How many of us are going to be part of TIG? Let me see. Wow. Well, you, if your neighbor lifted your hand, you can be encouraged and lift your hand. You, surely you can build the house of the Lord. Amen? God bless you, Candy and Mark. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate Rev Purity. Thank you so much. Uh, quick correction. The new members class is after the second service, immediately, right in the church. Okay, thank you. At this particular time, it is time to give. It is time to give. So I will uh, welcome the worship team just to join us here on stage. And let us pray and then our uh, clip will play. And also after that, I uh, just want us to appreciate uh, the woman of God who will be coming and sharing the word with us. So please, ladies. And gentlemen, let's appreciate our very own youth pastor, Pastor Karan Kyogora, who will be coming after a particular time. Yes, thank you so much. And so let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We say thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for April, oh God, that it's the youth month, oh God. And we ask that, dear Lord, may we be ready just to receive from you, just to be sparked with that power that you've called us to as your sons and your daughters, oh God. And even as we give, my Father, we ask that, dear Lord, may you bless our giving, oh God. And for anyone who lacks, my Father, we pray for your provision in the name of Jesus, oh God, because we believe that silver and gold belongs to you, oh God. We exalt you and we honor you. It is in Jesus' name we we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Here at Sitamburu Buru, we have different ways of giving. You may simply drop your offering in the offering baskets. You may pay via our M-Pesa payable number 933945 and the account name is Tithe Offering or Thanksgiving. You may also swipe your master or visa card on our PDQ machines at the main exits or by reaching out to our ushers dressed in red jackets. And last but not least, you can draw a check in favor of Christ's Answer Ministries and in Indicate Buruburu Buru at the back of the check. Giving is part and parcel of our worship experience.
He washed my sins away. Let's join in and sing together. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy One more time. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. of the Lord. You can appreciate all the young people in the house. Maybe before they sit down and the ones who are seated, I can just ask every young person who is in the house to just be up on, on their feet. You're a teenager. You're in 1925. Please just be up on your feet so that the congregation can see all of you. Come on, we can celebrate our young people. I think we can give a better appreciation for our young people. They are sold out to serve the Lord, and I, I am honored to minister to them. Even Pastor Jaigason is among them. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm honored to serve among these young people, lovely, wonderful people who love the Lord. We can appreciate the young people one more time as they take their seats. You can go ahead and take your seats. And as has been said, this month is the young people who are leading the services. It's going to be different. So please engage us uh, when we say full black next week. <laughs> Try your best, especially if you have a young person in the youth church. Amen, Deacon. Elder Gikonyo. Elder Angelica. Munajiju Aniwot. Especially if you have a young, young person. In the youth church, you had better put on some full black and a bandana. We will be so delighted to have you just uh, dress with us in that way. The young men will be leading. We thank God for the young people. Amazing things have been happening in the youth church. And just this last week, um, on Monday all the way to Friday, we were away. 
uh, with a group of the young people, the ones who have been doing the ex-candidates program. We were away for camp in Limuru, and we had great encounters with the Holy Spirit while there. And we celebrate the Lord for every work that was accomplished. Some of them will be coming to tell you that the Lord has called them into ministry because we had great encounters. When, I, when you hear me say great encounters in the presence of God, they are beyond description. We can just say great encounters in the presence of the Lord. And I know the Lord is going to richly use those young people who've been going through the Excans program. We have had two months, uh, straight two months with them. And then, of course, we had the camp. We will still be having a few more sessions with them. But I know the Lord is going to use them greatly even as they join campus in a short while. But we celebrate them. One more time, why don't you give a shout of praise to the Lord? Amen. As we turn into the scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, which is our theme verse, our theme verses for this month, we will be talking about, of course, our statement is right here, sparked for power. Sparked for power. And 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 9 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And Lord, we pray that would you cause the, uh, ensure that our hearts are open ground, fertile ground for your word, O oh God, that your word will bear forth fruit even to a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. We can say amen. And just before I continue, we have a youth conference happening from the 17th to the 19th at Sitam Karen. Uh, the, 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 the theme for that uh, conference is Youth Takeover, and we will be having amazing speakers lined up, including our regional overseer, our deputy uh, regional overseer, and we are delighted and excited for that. Please ensure, if you are a young person uh, in the house, please ensure you register for transport. We will be having some common transport available for us. First come, first serve bases. The ones who will register first are the ones who will be able to carry in transport. But as for parents, if you are able to uh, take your child to sit am Karen, you can do that so that we are able to facilitate the ones who are unable to completely get themselves to sit am Karen. So we'll be going from Wednesday to the Friday from 17th to 19th of the other week this month. Um, and we are looking forward. So back to the scriptures, sparked for power is our theme and we are so so excited because the lord has been doing amazing things for us to get to the place where we got to decide on this theme we were just looking back and asking ourselves what has the lord been doing in the youth church what has the lord been speaking to us as young people and we had a lot of things and a lot of, a lot of statements that were coming to mind a lot of scriptures that were coming to mind but we settled on this because we feel it is a season where we need to be ignited for new things. We need to be ablaze for the things of God. We need to go deeper in the things of God because there's a journey of depth that we have been walking, but there is more. Somebody say there is more. There is more that we can glean into the presence of God. And so when we look at the scripture, when, when Paul is writing to the young Timothy and he's telling him, fan into flame the gift of God that you have received, we looked at it and we said, indeed, it is a season where we have been trusting in God for great things. But now it is time for us to experience those greater things. We need to be sparked for power. And being sparked for power really means just exactly what it says is being sparked for power that we receive some power and then we glow to the world if you have ever grown up in in the village like i grew up in the village where i would have to use kuni for the cool kids kuni ni firewood <laughs> so we have three stones and you have to put in uh, firewood on every side some of you are getting surprised that i grew up in the village it is true i grew up in the village it is true, I grew up in the village. And so three stones and you put in firewood and um, 
for those of you who know that, you know every time you have to keep, um, now how do I explain? <laughs> Adding some more firewood and ensuring the fire is still burning. Um, and in case the fire is going out, you have to keep adding some more firewood so that it keeps burning and it keeps burning and it keeps burning. But if you let it, uh, if you don't keep checking on it, if you don't keep um, ensuring that the fire that has already burnt goes into the fire, the fire dies. And that's the life of a Christian as well. So when we are talking about spark for power, we are talking about ensuring that that spark of the Holy Spirit, that spark of the power of God does not go out. Ensuring that the fire of God in your life as a young person, as an old person, as a, an older person, whatever age you are, ensuring that the power of God does not go out. And why we need to be reminded this, you know, you would ask, why did Paul need to remind Timothy about ensuring that he is ignited, ensuring that he is ablaze, ensuring that he is sparked for power, ensured, ensuring that he is fanning into flame the gift that God had given him. It is not that he had gotten to the place where there was no power. He was still serving. He was still serving the church. But right there, there were many things that he was still going through. There are many things that he had to handle. There are many things that he had to think through. The church was growing, but also there were many things that were happening in the church that were making him, that could make him even get discouraged and possibly lose the power of God as he serves the Lord. And so Paul, his mentor, Paul, the one that had introduced him to ministry, had to remind him, my young brother, my little protege, my mentee, please ensure that you fan into flame the gift of God that is in your life. And as Paul is commanding Timothy to ensure that he stirs up his gift, it is important for us to understand that even the gifts of God that have been released upon every one of us, there are three things that you must understand where those gifts are concerned. And that is, there is anointing for every gift. And then there is authority for every gift. And there is spiritual power in your hands for every believer. Because the moment you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of God begins to live in you. And in that sense, the Lord gives you authority to be able to do certain things that you are not able to do in your life. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there's a certain anointing that rests upon you that you are able to do certain things. You're able to speak in a certain way that you are not able to speak before. You are able to command certain things and they become because the presence of God is in you. The anointing of God is in you. The gift that God has given you then must be stirred up because of that anointing, because of the presence of that anointing. And that is why as Christians, if you're operating in the gift of the Holy Spirit, when you step into a place, the people are able to say there's something different about this one. There's something different about this other. There's something different about every one of you who is a believer and is operating in the gift that God has given you. And so three things where there's the gifts of God are concerned, anointing authority and spiritual power in your hands. And so when Paul again tells him, kindle this, ensure it is burning in the fire of God. Ensure that this gift does not die. Ensure that you keep using it. Some of the things that happens in the church that make us get to a place where it's like we don't even understand our authority in Christ Jesus. It's like we don't even understand the anointing that has already rested upon us because of the word of God, because of believing in Christ. There are certain things that sometimes get into play and cause us to walk away from the power of God and cause us to allow, to, to just, uh, just allow the fire to dwindle away. The reminder today is that we ensure that it doesn't dwindle away. But but I just want us to look at some of the things that cause us to allow the fire to die down. And one of the things is doing the work of the Lord in our own flesh. I have already said that every one of us, the moment we give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is something for each of us. 
there is an assignment for each of us. And that is why the anointing of God will rest upon you. That is why the authority of God will be upon your life. And so some of the things that weaken us, some of the things that weaken our passion, some of the things that cause the fire to die is doing the work of the Lord in our own flesh. And by this, I, I'm not just speaking to those that serve in the church. I'm not just speaking to those ones that are in ministry in the worship team. That sometimes when they lead you, will like, you're like, did they really pray or something like that? I'm talking about every one of us who is born again. You know the Lord as your personal savior. You have surrendered your life to the Lord and you have received and believed that he died on the cross and, and rose again on the third day. You begin to, you get to a place where you don't allow God to work in you and you begin doing things in the flesh. You stop depending on God. In the beginning, when you received your, when you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are completely dependent on the Lord. You would rise up in the morning and you would tell the Lord, I need you today. I, as I do my assignments, as I go about my business, as I relate with people, I need you today. But you get to the place where you become so familiar, maybe because you've been in salvation for quite a while. Maybe it has been 20 years. Maybe it's been 15 years. But you get to a place where, ah, I know these things. I know how to do these things. You've been leading worship and every time you stand before the people, you lead and, and, and as you begin to lead worship, people begin to receive miracles and all that and then you get to a place where I know this thing you become too familiar with the presence of God and as Christians sometimes that is where we get we've been in salvation we've been walking with God and we know that every time I pray for something it comes to pass and then we begin to get so familiar that sometimes it gets to a day when the, the, the day is so busy and so packed you have no time for the Lord you have no time for the Lord. That you wake up in the morning and you just throw yourself out of the bed and you go about the business of the day and there is nowhere that you tell the Lord, God, I need you. God, I need your help. God, I need your masses. God, I need you to guide me. Then in that sense, because of that lack of dependence, you get the place where you're just operating in the flesh. And then maybe things begin to go wrong and you begin to wonder what happened. But it's just because you left the place of fanning into flame that which has been given to you by God. But the other thing is fear. And Paul tells Timothy, you've not been given a spirit of fear. It's about being coward. Getting to the place where just you allow fear to cripple you. You're given assignments, sometimes big projects at the workplace, and you know you have the power of God to do those things. But you begin to look at yourself and wonder, am I really cut out for this thing? Am I made to work on this thing? Is this thing what I deserve? You know God has given you a gift. You can prophesy. You can pray for people and they will be healed. But the enemy begins to lie to you. The enemy begins to remind you. You know you used to smoke. How can you be able to speak these things and they become? The enemy begins to remind you of your past. And then fear creeps in. And because of fear, you're just there. You are not able to do anything. You're not able to operate in the authority in the anointing, in the assignment that God has given you. Fear cripples in. You begin to look at yourself and look at the other person. You begin to think the other person is more gifted than I am. The other person speaks better than I am. If anything, their English is actually better than, than my English. If anything, they went to a better school than I did. You look at how they lead worship and now how they just do the ad libs and all that. And then you just begin to look at yourself and you think, I can do this. You allow fear to creep in. Or maybe just because there, are, there has been a challenge here and there, you begin to look at those challenges and say, this happened, and this happened, and then this happened. And then you look at those things and you're like, ah, I can do anything. The enemy is going to come after me. If I do this, I will receive another attack from the enemy. This and this is going to happen if I do this. And then you allow 
the gift to start just dying down. You allow the gift to just start dying down. Because even when we get to that place, there has been a conscious decision that has been made. Sometimes we may look at it and think, no, it was not a conscious decision. But the truth is, you listened to the enemy. The enemy convinced you you're not good enough. The enemy convinced you that uh, you can't do this thing. You can't stand before the people. You can't pray that people will be healed. You can't sing. And then you just allow the lies to take root in your life. Or maybe people have hurt you. Your family members have hurt you. Someone has done this and the other. And then you just allow those things to take root. The bitterness and anger towards those people to take root. And when it takes root, the fire dies down. Because there is a way the fire cannot operate when certain things are present. And sometimes opposition. Sometimes we face opposition from every side. Sometimes you have this great idea. You have this great vision ahead of you. And you're looking at it and you can see how it's so grand. And you see how we're going to do it. You have the details, every detail on how this will be achieved. But then people rise up. And like the way Sanballat and Tobias rose up at the time of Nehemiah when he was rebuilding the wall. And they were saying, even the dogs can bring this wall down. And people begin to speak like that. Because of the things that you are doing. You have believed it. You have heard it from God. And you are building it. You are doing it. And then someone begins to say, it won't last. Just keep doing it, but it won't last. Nothing will work. Nothing is going to be a straight line. You will just get to that place and everything will crumble down. And then you allow that. You allow that voice to settle down in your spirit. And fear sets in. Anxiety sets in. A sense of defeat sets in. And you're like, ah, I can't do this thing anymore. And then you give up. Opposition sometimes. It can cause the fire to dwindle. It can cause the fire to go out. Sometimes we neglect our relationship with God. Sometimes we get to the place, I think I'd already talked about this, but we become too familiar with the things of God. We become, you know, the things we prayed for in the beginning, we receive them. And then we get to that place and we are like, I have received the things I prayed for. I am a testimony of the things I prayed for a few years ago. And then you begin to look at it and sometimes almost worship the things that God has given you. And then in that you neglect you forget that it was God who opened the door for the job that you have. Because on that day, there was a day. You are praying, God, please open a door for me. I need a business. I need to have an income. And those things the Lord gave. The Lord gave. But as you are enjoying the fruit of the things that God has given you, sometimes you become so reluctant even to opening the Bible. You get to the place where you don't even remember where you keep your Bible anymore. You used to pray. You used to pray and fast every so often. You would not just wait when Sitam announces that there is prayer and fasting in the beginning of the year or in the middle of the year. You would actually ensure that there is prayer and fasting going on in your own life. And then the Lord answers every prayer. You are tarrying in the presence of God. Every night and day there was some worship happening in your house. Your neighbors knew that this one loves the Lord. They are constantly in worship. They are constantly seeking the Lord. They are constantly Constantly asking the Lord to do something for their life. And then the Lord answers every prayer that you prayed for. You used to go to the mountain, to the prayer retreat and what have you. To the heaven gate and wherever else that you've been going. And then you get to the place. You become so comfortable in the things that God has given you. And then you neglect the relationship with God. And then the fire dies down. And then the fire dies down. You forget to prioritize the relationship with God. Because even when God has answered those prayers, you still need to prioritize the relationship with him. And we allow ourselves to get distracted by the worldly concerns. Sometimes we allow ourselves to be distracted by the things of the world. 
Yes, we are in this world, the scripture tells us, but we are not of this world. And sometimes we begin to get so concerned about A, B, C, D. While yes, those things need to be met, the needs of those things need to be met. But sometimes they become so heavy on us. They become so loud in our minds and hearts that we forget our relationship with God. We begin to get so concerned about those things that we forget, oh my, I need to ensure that I am still walking with the Lord. We get distracted. And the scripture says, when these things come your way, don't allow them to choke you. Because sometimes they can choke you. Sometimes they can discourage you. Sometimes things can happen so much in a way that you just walk in a place where you're thinking, ah, the enemy has been on my case so much. And the other thing, a lack of love for the people of God. A lack of love for the people of God. That when you received Christ, you were so in love with him. That you loved his people so much. That every day you also thought about ministering. Preaching the gospel to the ones who did not know the Lord. That every place you would go, you would meet with someone and remind them, By the way, ni meokoka. But you get to the place where because of being so comfortable, because you stopped fanning the gift into flame, you become so comfortable and you no longer want to identify yourself with salvation. That even at the workplace when people are looking for someone to pray, you want to hide. You want to just keep quiet and you won't be the first But at some point, you are the first. You used to be the quick, the first one to say, I think before we start this meeting, we can trust the Lord to ensure that he gives us wisdom in this meeting. But you become so comfortable. You stop fanning the gift into flame. And you get to the place where you're so comfortable. You no longer have the love. You no longer want people to know the Christ that is in you. The other thing that makes the fire die down is a love for secret sins in our lives. A love for secret sins in our life. Sometimes we get to the place where we hold on to sinful habits and they become habitual. We tend to just, I will do this thing then I'll go and just tell the Lord, please forgive me. And he'll forgive me because he's a gracious God, because he's a loving God. And then you take grace, the grace of God for granted. In Jude, the scripture says that some of these that have taken the grace of God for granted are among us. But Romans asks us the question, Romans chapter 6 asks, should we continue to sin so that grace may abound? But no, we shouldn't. And sometimes because of those habitual sins, those things that you know for sure, they are not visible to anybody else. But you know you cannot lie to God. And the fire keeps dying down. The fire keeps dying down. A life of secret sins. Lastly, failing to meet regularly with fellow brethren. And of course, many other times when we, the moment we give our lives to the Lord, we are very committed to fellowship. We are very committed to our safari groups. We are very committed to serve in the ministries that God has called us to do. But sometimes when we stop allowing the fire to keep burning, we get to the place where we begin to neglect the fellowship with other brethren. And then we keep running away Then suddenly, we were not available for SG because you prioritized your work meeting. We were not available for your marriage care group because, uh, you know, something was happening, this and this. You begin to prioritize everything else apart from fellowship with fellow brethren. And then the enemy begins to rob you of the zeal for the things of God. Because the moment he manages to isolate you from other believers... He manages to win you. And then he begins to ensure that the fire keeps dying down. 
Because you're not in fellowship with other brethren. There's no one reminding you, you know you need to study your word, read the word of God. You know you need to keep praying. You know we still need to meet up for Bible study and all that. You neglect the fellowship and there is no one in your life to remind you there is something that you need to keep doing. And so Paul tells Timothy, fan into flame the gift of God that is in your life. So how do we fan into flame this gift of God that he has given unto us as a church? But before I get there, Paul talks about when he says he's not given us a spirit, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He talks about the spirit that God has given us has power, has a sound mind, but also has love. So even when you are thinking about how to operate, it is important to remember that there is power, three things, power, love, and sound mind. And the word power for Greek is dunamis. And that's like, I don't know how to describe it, but just like a big fire, you know, something that lights up greatly. And in terms of a noun, you can think of, of it as a dynamite, but dynamite will destroy. But when you think of dunamis, the power of the spirit, it builds, it glows, it thrives, it brings life even where there was death. So three things, power, love, and a sound mind. And I, I, I won't belabor on that. I'll just go straight to the things that we must do to ensure that the fire of God is flaming in our lives. And one is that we must keep longing for the presence of God. We must keep longing for the presence of God. As long as there is no hunger, as long as there is no genuine thirst for the things of God, the fire will die down. You will become so comfortable. You will neglect the things that used to help you grow in your relationship with God. You will neglect the love you once had for God. As long as there is no thirst for the things of God, there will be dead in your life. There will be death in your life. Psalms 42 verse 1 to 2 says, As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Is there such a hunger in your heart? Is there such a thirst in your heart, in your life? Is there such a longing for the things of God? Because if there is no longing, the fire will die down. And Paul tells us we need to fall into flame the fire of God for the gift of God that the Lord has given to each of us. If there is no longing, the equation will be that there will be death. Everything in your spiritual life will be so dead. You will be praying and you will not even experience the presence of God. You will be asking, but the fire will be so down. But when there is a longing, when there is a longing, there will be something that drives you to the word of God. There will be something that drives you to fellowship. There will be something that drives you to the place of prayer. And then secondly, feed on God's word. Feed on God's word. The only way to ensure that you remain sparked for power is that you must feed on the word of God. This is what Psalms 119 verse 103 says. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How does the word of God test in your mouth? Can you be able to testify like the psalmist? It is sweeter than honey. For those of us who come from Cumberland, you know there is very good honey. Very sweet honey. Elder Henry, you can identify with me. Now when the scripture says the word of God is sweeter than honey to my mouth. How does the word of God taste to your mouth? When you open the scriptures, do you, are you excited to even open the word of God? Does that sweetness drive you to go and study the word of God? Does that sweetness call you to go and open the scriptures and just study and hear what the Lord is saying to you? Does the word of God call you or did you lose the taste? Because if you lost the taste, you will not open the word of God. And then the fire will go out. The fire will die down. 
Because even as we are longing to hear the voice of God in other ways, we must begin in hearing from the word of God. And so, fan into flame the gift of God. Study the word of God. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, feed on God's word. And then thirdly, consistently remain in the place of prayer. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray in the spirit at all times and in all occasions. If we are to fan into flame the gift of God in our lives, if we are to remain sparked up for power, we've got to learn the art of prayer. We've got to learn what it means to remain in the place of prayer. That even when the enemy sends attacks in every side, that you would still go back into the place of prayer and call on the name of the Lord and the Lord will come to your rescue. Back to the story of Nehemiah, even when opposition came. He had his weapon on one side, but he was praying on the other hand. He was seeking the Lord. He was seeking guidance from the Lord. He was seeking encouragement from the Lord. As Christians, we must learn to consistently remain in the place of prayer. Consistently call on the name of the Lord and tell the Lord, I still need you every day. Even after you have answered every one of my prayer, I still need you to come through for me. I still need the wisdom that comes from you. I still need the guidance that that comes from you we've got to remain consistently in the place of prayer that even when discouragement sets in you can tell the devil I will not allow this discouragement to set in I will not allow the fear to set in because the scripture tells us as you pray and as you tell the Lord as you present all the things known to the Lord he will replace there will be an exchange that from anxiety there will be peace of God to guard your heart as you seek the Lord as you seek him in the place of prayer there will be an exchange that whatever was taking you away from him he will begin to encourage you he will begin to ask you and tell you the direction to walk he will begin to fill you up even more with the spirit of God even as you seek him in the place of prayer you've got to be consistent in the place of prayer and I know you keep hearing this every other time but it's not just cliche, but as a Christian, as a believer, there is no power without being in the place of prayer. The power that we are talking about, there is, it won't be there if you have no word of God, if there is no longing, but also if there is no prayer. You've got to remain in that place of prayer. Even when your schedules become so busy, you've got to remain in the place of prayer and seek the Lord. And as you seek the Lord, Jeremiah tells us that as you seek the Lord, he will reveal to you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. Great and mighty things that you know nothing about. That means that the things that you had no idea would happen, the Lord would begin to reveal them in the place of prayer. The word of God in Corinthians says that uh, there is something great that the Lord has prepared for them that love him. That no ear has heard, no eye has seen, no mind has conceived. But through the spirit of God he reveals it because the spirit of God knows the mind of God and so as you remain in the place of prayer you begin to know the mind of God for your life you begin to know the mind of God for your family you begin to know the mind of God for your generation you begin to know the mind of God for your business and for your job for the place you work and for the people you 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 relate with you begin to know the mind of God while you are in the place of prayer because the spirit of God begins to reveal those things. So you've got to remain consistently in the place of prayer. And then lastly, you've got to stay at the altar. Many times, Christians, we leave the altar. We leave the place of the altar because things have happened in our lives. Discouragement has set in. When you go back to Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 8 all the way to 13, the Lord speaking to the priests concerning the fire in the temple. And there used to be fire that is lit in the temple. And the Lord says this fire must not go out. And so the priests had to ensure that that fire was lit all the time. 
Now we are not in that dispensation where we light the fire at the altar. But the fire needs to burn inside of you. The fire needs to burn inside of you. So having done these things, we must not leave the place of the altar. And what that means is that you must be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice every time. That at the altar, whatever it is that you're doing with your life, whatever it is, whether you're working in the marketplace, whether you're relating with people, that you are a living sacrifice. In Romans 12, it says that we ought to surrender ourselves as living sacrifices to the Lord. But we forget, we forget that we are living sacrifices for the Lord. And then our lives become so dry. Our lives become so empty. And then even as ministers, we begin to minister to people from an empty cup. We begin to relate with people from a place of the flesh. Every other thing begins to take over our lives because we have left the altar. But we must not leave the altar because God needs every one of us to ensure that the fire is burning in our lives. It is important that you don't settle for anything less than that which God desires for you. We have been praying for a move in this generation. But how will this move come up if the people who are supposed to be at the altar already forgot their assignment at the altar and are no longer praying for the move of God? We are asking the Lord, revive us again, rekindle the, the fire that was there. But how will the fire come up if we left the altar and we just left it for one person? How will the fire come up? The Lord is ready to cause a move. And the fire of God is already spreading out. There have been revivals spreading out among the young people, by the way. But we've got to all hold up together. Stay at the altar and keep trusting God for this fire. As we trust God to deliver things, to deliver us from certain things, we've got to remain at the altar. Because it is at the altar we get fired up. It is at the altar that the power of the Lord begins to work in us. That we will get to the place where we will speak things and they will become. That we will lay our hands on the sick and they will get healed. Where are the Christians that, are, that will rise up and say, I will remain at the altar until the Lord has come. Until I see the move in my generation. Will there be somebody in Sitamburuburu who will partner with us and say, I've got to remain at the altar until I see a move of God in my generation. I've got to remain at the altar until I see my young person transformed. Where are the people? I am asking a question. Where are they? And if you are one among them, would you just rise up on your feet as we get to pray and tell the Lord we desire to see a move. Because if we are to remain sparked up for power, there's got to be somebody who says, I'll remain at the altar until I see the fire of God burning in the nations. Until I see the fire of God. Until I see everybody that is set ablaze for the things of God. Until I see every young generation that comes after me. That from generation to the generation, that the fire of God will still be there. You know, the older generation, let me just speak to you for a moment. I've heard many of you tell me, when we used to be in the CU, there were certain things that used to happen. We used to pray and things would happen. But how come? What happened? Didn't you pass the baton to the young people that they can be able to remain at the altar and pray for certain things to happen? For those things that used to happen in that day. Because the same God who used to move in your day is the same God who is still alive today. Who is still at work today. And he is asking today. I am asking today who will be our partner as a young generation who will partner with us in the place of prayer and trust God that this fire this fire that we have heard of this revival that we have heard of in the days past these things that we used to hear that used to happen these things that we used to pray for in the seals and they would happen that we would go to the mission field and there was no one who would push us to go to the mission field we would just organize and we would find ourselves and go to the mission field and great things would happen we would come back home with testimonies we would come back home fired up for the things of God where what happened can we pass the baton to the young people 
we must stay sparked up for power. Come on, open your mouth and just tell the Lord to help us to stay at the altar. That that move that we desire, that revival that we have desired would be experienced today. That that move of God that was there in your day would be experienced today. Pray that the young people that you know, the young person you know in your life will not be distracted by anything but the Lord will cause them to have such a hunger in their heart but even also, even every one of us that we will thirst for God in such a great way, with such depth that we will be able to see the power of God at work in our day, that we will be able to see the power of God in the generations to come in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will be able to see the move of God in our lives in the name of Jesus, that the young people, the teenagers, the youth, every one of them will be turning to the Lord and saying, this I have seen God, I have been praying and I am seeing the Lord doing great and mighty things in the name of Jesus, come on, we are praying Oh God, light a fire in us, so oh God. Light a fire in us, so oh God. Let it not go out in the name of Jesus. Revive us again, even where the fire has died down. Oh God, would you revive us again in the name of Jesus? That Lord, we would be back to the altar, trusting in you, oh God. We would be back to the place of prayer, Jehovah. Trusting in you, dear Father, knowing that, Lord, in that place, oh God, you reveal great and mighty things in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. We are still praying and asking the Lord to move in our generation, in the generations that are coming after us. Oh, we will not settle for less, oh God. We want more, Lord, because there is more. There is more, oh God, for our generation, Lord. Oh, Lord, light the fire one more time, oh God. Light the fire in us one more time in the name of Jesus, oh God. That we will see great and mighty things happening in our day. That we will see the move of God happening in our day in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we, we thank you for the, your move amongst us today. And Lord, as many of us committed themselves to tarry at the place of prayer, at the altar, that we may be altered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may you help us to be faithful to that commitment today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And because, Father, we belong to you. We are the sheep of your pasture. May you do it in our time, O oh God, that your glory will radiate through us and in us. And to the rest of the world, to the glory of your name. Be glorified and be honored because you're faithful. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You can give the Lord a celebration. And before we get to close this service this morning, we cannot talk about being sparked for the Lord without getting a connection and a relationship with the Lord. And therefore, as our heads are bowed in the presence of the Lord, I would want to give an opportunity to somebody that would want to give their lives to Jesus this first Sunday of April, the year 2023. You're saying, you're right there. Just lift up your right hand. I'll see you. I'll pray with you. We are going to pray with you and commend you to the Lord. Anybody that would want to give their lives to the Lord this morning. At the overflow, anybody would want to give their, uh, their lives to Christ this morning. You're out there and you're saying, I want to make a decision for the Lord. 
Because that is the beginning point of being sparked for the kingdom of God. Anyone that would want to make a decision for Jesus. And Father, because of your faithfulness and mercy, we thank you that your word has come forth this morning with power and authority. We pray that the Spirit of God will continue to divide the truths of God to us even as we go our way this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus we pray. Come on, give the Lord a shout and a celebration all over this place in Jesus' name. And just before we do the benediction, notice of the annual delegates conference. Notice is here by given that the annual delegates conference, the ADC for Christ is the Answer Ministries will be held on Saturday the 27th of April. The year is 2024 from 8.30 a.m. at Seaton Valley Road, Dennis Whitehall. This shall be a hybrid meeting with members attending either in person or virtually through a Zoom link, which shall be circulated to the delegates prior to the meeting. All delegates are encouraged to attend in person. The agenda, prayer and devotion, reading of the notice, convening the meeting, welcome and introduction of the delegates, confirmation of the minutes of the ADC held on the 29th of April, the year 2023, Matters arising from the 29th April and, uh, 2023 ADC minutes, the chairman's report and uh, its adoption, consideration of the audited accounts for the year ended 31st December 2023, appointment of auditors for the ensuing year, election of deacon board members, ratification of appointed elders, any other business for which notice shall have been received by the church secretary at least seven days prior to the ADC and all AOBs to be sent to the admin at citam.org. Kindly note that all elected delegates are invited and entitled to attend. That is all elected delegates. Therefore, this meeting is for elected delegates. They are the ones to attend. Not every member, registered member as the RGM. CITAM audited accounts and yearly reports are available for Peruso in the ADC documents bundle circulated through the provided link under the signature of Deacon Martin Munyu, uh, church secretary. And that is the first reading and notice of the ADC meeting. We have our first time visitors. If you lifted your hand, just join me here for a very short moment just to invite you. First time visitors. We had some first time visitors from this end. Just come, come. Just come right here. Sit and buru buru. We can appreciate our first time visitors as they come. Yes, we appreciate our visitors. We are happy that you can come and be with us during our worship services to the glory of the, and the honor of the name of the Lord. Sit and buru buru. Just, just join me here. Just join me right here. Anybody else that joined us for the very first time today? Kindly appreciate our first time visitors. And sit and buru buru, what do we tell them? You're very welcome and thank you for worshipping with us today. If you are looking for a church, yes, there is some more coming. Amen. Your search for a church has come to an abrupt end. But if you are just passing by, we send you with greetings to your congregation. And the gentleman on my right in blue, just on my right, which is your left, is going to walk with you to a visitor's lounge and share with you a cup of tea and get to know you a little more on behalf of Sitam Buruburu. Let's appreciate them as, a, as you join the welcome ministers. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon your lives. May the Lord bless your going out and coming back now and forevermore. And may the Lord fight all your battles and make you victorious even as you're sparked for power to the glory of his name. And now may the grace 
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be thus now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. And ever, amen. And the Lord bless you.